हेलो हेलो हाय अकरम हाय अकरम हाय वर्सल हाय सुमन हाउ आर यू वी आर गुड हाउ आर यू आई एम डूइंग वेल आई ईट टू मच सो आई एम हैविंग अ टफ टाइम सिटिंग अप स्ट्रेट बट दैट गुड दैट गुड फॉर योर हेल्थ सिंस यू आर ग्रोइंग ओल्ड yeah right <laughs> Uh, okay uh, so uh, simran uh, has to show you few prototypes that she has made and uh, post that uh, we can discuss about the ecom thing yeah yeah that's fine yeah simran please go ahead yeah yeah Uh, can you can see my screen not uh, yet okay i can see it now uh so i'll just start with this certificate wire frame so you guys can see my the wire frame right on my yeah. screen okay. yes can you zoom in on it yeah uh okay so what i have done is basically the place where we wrote certificate of completion i mm. felt that, that that text did not you know make sense really a lot like right. it just was there for i don't know why so i just added the session name instead of certificate for completion so whatever okay. the session name that would appear over here and then whichever is the conference that would be shown over here with yeah. the date and the ce credits Yes. We don't have any, uh, you know, random information just all over the certificate, like that right. certificate of completion text. That's fine. Perfect. Okay. Uh, okay, and then I had a few admin admin UI to show you guys. Okay, so first admin UI which I had made is the verification of accounts. So, uh, okay. if the user is not verified. first of all this is the listing of all the professionals which the admin will see excuse uh, me sir can you can you zoom in a little bit more I, i okay go ahead that's fine okay uh so this is basically the listing of all the professionals which the admin will see when he clicks on the professional tabs on the left hand side uh, navigation bar so okay. basically there will be a column which will be called as account status so in this account status there will be three statuses first is somebody who is not verified like somebody who has signed up on our platform but he is not verified then somebody who is actually verified and using his account and then somebody who is inactive we also will be building a functionality uh, where you can you know close your account or drop your account uh, so this inactive status basically shows that okay so if a user is not verified uh, this will basically be a link so if the admin just clicks on not verified he'll just get this pop up which will say that click on the button below to verify the users and there will be a verify button and when okay. he does this then the user will be verified got it so what's all this works right yeah yeah this is fun Uh, this will clear clear 70% of the issues <laughs> yes <clears throat> and then one problem which emma that mentioned me about merging accounts yes. so there is some there's a person who has um, like we have uh, imported their data using some other e email address and now they are trying to sign up using a, a different email address completely so how do we merge those accounts So I have given a button over here which says merge account. So uh, the admin, when he clicks on that, he basically gets this as the next screen. So the command over here is select the account you want to merge. So I'll basically whatever I'll have their email or maybe I have their name or maybe I have their phone number, like the old phone number of that account. So I'll be basically entering it over here. and when i enter that name phone number or email address over here 
I'll get the corresponding record which is already present in my uh, uh, database. I'll get it over here. So when I get that record, I basically just select this record. I can get multiple records uh, for if I uh, select by name, then there can be many Simrins who can be registered yes. on the platform. So I just select whichever account I want to merge and I just click on proceed. And the next step which comes is basically select the account to be merged with. So the account which is the new account which the user has created, I want to merge the old account which I selected in the previous state to this new account. So I'll again find the new account with the email address, name or phone number which I have currently. And I'll just select the new account and those two accounts will be merged. What if there's more than two accounts? Um, so the current functionality, so the user will have to do it again then. If oh, I see. So every time that, uh, okay, so there's, there's no way of displaying uh, the first time that there seems to be uh, two or, or more uh, or one or more other accounts to the same name, Simran, um, and asking the user that uh, can you verify that these three belong to the same Simran. Currently, no, but I think we can build something like that. I'm not sure. Um, because here's the idea that um, uh, statistically likely, uh, if the name is the same and the email address uh, is the only difference, like let's say um, you have the first name, last name, uh, and uh, the uh, uh, email is the same, but the phone number is different, or vice versa. The phone number is the same, and the email is different in the in the multiple accounts. If, if other than the name, one of the other fields, email or phone number, is the same, then it's statistically likely that uh, uh, they're all the same person. And obviously, the easiest way to verify that is the license number, right? Yeah. You're yeah. not going if the license number is the same, there's no doubt that those accounts are all for the same person. Right? Uh, if the course. phone number or email yeah. is the same, there is a good chance that it's the same person. But uh, license number is definite. Okay. Right? So my idea is that uh, it, uh, this flow is fine. Uh, I, I just think in the first step, so if you have uh, suspicion that there's duplicate accounts in the first step, uh, you search for all the duplicates, you know, show it and give the user the ability to look at these uh, um, columns and verify. Order. Right. Uh, Akram, I have uh, something to say here. <clears throat> yeah. Right. So uh, I totally agree with your point that uh, user should have the ability to merge uh, one or more accounts at a time. Uh, but uh, when I go ahead, go into the uh, structural and backend details, uh, okay. there, is a, there are four to five steps that needs to be done to merge uh, one account at a time. So uh, I, what I would suggest is uh, let's keep this flow. Uh, Simran, could you just uh, shift to the next screen once I click on proceed? Uh, the next, yeah. So here we show them the other two accounts as well. Do you want to merge? Uh, these are the other accounts with the same uh, uh, details that you had searched. Oh, for. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Only you will be if, returned to step one, right? What's yeah, that? yeah. It, it, yeah. If you do it this way, at least see what I don't want to do is is have somebody go into this process, just merge one account, and there's still two others out there, and the problem still exists. You know. Yeah. So. Uh, if you if you display the other two here and keep uh, uh, looping the the yes. user back into uh, um, doing uh, the merge, then that's fine uh, because this way at least all okay. of those accounts okay. will be exposed and and you can decide whether you want to merge them or yeah. not. Yeah, the reason I'm saying that because that gives us uh, gives uh, uh, you know while doing the backend development it gives a clear uh, idea. And clear error handling. If the if say if when uh, if we are trying to merge multiple accounts at a time, and uh, say we encounter an error merging one, but the other two are uh, merged properly, so uh, the database might go ahead uh, and have an ambiguity, which I don't want to uh, build that. 
and inconsistency so that's the reason i'm suggesting that we have uh, one merging at a time yeah no, no, that's fine i agree with you yeah go ahead do it that way so simran uh, this uh, once the one account is merged uh, uh, we will have to show the other two accounts with the similar uh, criteria for merging and then then the process goes on i'll edit this uh, and i'll send you sure. okay please go ahead sam uh yeah so then yeah next uh, wireframe was of downloading the certificates of a particular user so basically from professionals when i have the professional listing i'll just click on the name of the professional over here let us say i click on simran uh, you can see that i have made all these as links so uh, whenever ram also creates the ui like the actual final uis of this i'll make sure that all these names are clickable so that yeah. when i click on simran then i basically see the entire profile over here where i can uh, uh, actually click on transcripts and i can go and see the listing of the uh, ce credits for every subject uh then we have this particular screen built exactly like the ce tool uh, like how the ce tool screen will look to a user okay and here we have a listing of all the certificates which the user has. so i have you know taken some inspiration from invision over here so basically first i'll have the, these are the radio buttons which are there which are associated with every certificate so initially when i come over here i will see the download all button so if i want uh, to download all the certificates i'll just uh -huh. click on download and i'll get a i'll get the so all all the certificates of the user but let okay. us say that i just want to download two certificates so what i'll do is i'll basically click on these two certificates then the yeah. download basically changes to download and then when i click on download only do those two certificates are downloaded <laughs> okay that's fine फंक्शनिटीज आउट देर uh that's a good question um uh so uh, you know how the the nmdc meeting they had uh, the uh, uh, we did the bulk import of the live event uh, tickets that they pre-sold already yeah um and there seems to be uh quite a few people that are trying to create accounts uh that uh, you know they create the account but then they don't see the live event there so yeah. th their perception is that they already paid nmdc and registered and we were supposed to have that information already in the system and when they create yeah. their account uh, uh, some of them are successfully creating new uh, uh accounts for nobi but when they go into their my courses and live events they don't see that there okay so yeah. that's probably because my you know i think we're all uh, either i'm uh, you know i'm making this assumption but i think we're all in agreement that uh, the email address might have been different from you know what they used to create nobi account compared to what uh, they used when um, Uh, they yeah. uh, purchase the nmdc ticket live event ticket yeah, yeah. um so if that's the case uh how do we use the admin ui to solve that situation uh, i don't i'm not sure if this is a duplicate account uh, scenario is it yeah no that's not the duplicate account it's basically uh adding a particular user to a particular event yes yeah So that that I think is going to be important, and here's why. Today I had uh, in the afternoon I had a a, a meeting uh, that was uh, extremely uh, in, you know uh, a big opportunity, and okay. uh, uh, this uh, uh, person uh, regularly uh, has uh, lectures that uh, up to a thousand people um, uh, attend. Okay. 
And yeah. uh, so, uh, and she has pre-sold uh, not only the event uh, coming up, uh, but uh, the next three events over the next three months, uh, she has pre-sold all of them. Okay. okay. So, and she wants to work with Novi. So here's the issue. If she's pre-sold all of it, it's just, it's the same as NMDC. They've got all of these people with all of these uh, purchases that they've made through Eventbrite. They yeah. use a, a separate ser registration service called Eventbrite. Uh, I had given you a reference to Cvent and Eventbrite. Yeah. Those are the two, two separate yeah. ones. So she, she sent me her login for uh, uh, Eventbrite and she said, you can go and access whatever data you want and import it in. I have no problem with that. So that's my challenge there is that, uh, you know, this is not 200 people at NMDC. This is uh, over a thousand people um, and multiple events. So w we will face this situation. So we have to come up with a creative way that when uh, third party sales like this occur, and we're importing data, we have to have a very systematic way of importing that data and making sure that uh, the admin UI has some sort of facility that gives uh, our users the ability to say, oh, okay, this person has pre purchased tickets outside of Nobi. Uh, let's look at the data and, 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 and um, uh, attach the event to their Nobi yeah. account. Right. Uh Okay, I, I get the idea, Akram, uh, but uh, I am forcing few technical hurdles with this uh, with respect to mainly with respect to the payments because uh, when yes. uh, so it's it's all connected uh, the Nobi uh, user database plus the payments plus the razor pay uh, all three being connected and uh, when we are trying to add uh, an event into a user's profile from the admin uh, portal. We won't be doing the actual payment, so so That's let correct. me just so let me just work it out and uh, probably uh, uh, do it uh, uh, later uh, after. So let's uh, let's build this uh, what Simran has already shown, and then uh, by that time I'll have a discussion with uh, Surikant and Ankush and uh, uh, and define what has to be done for that, and then we can uh, proceed with that as well. Yes, that's fine. So for, for, for building that into the admin uh, uh, utility, I think that will address almost all of the major issues uh, that yeah. we see uh, in support, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, okay, okay, so that's it. That, that, I don't have any other uh, thoughts for the admin utility right now. You know, I, yeah. I I haven't experienced any other problems that we can no. solve. These are the uh, problems that we see on a daily basis. Right, uh, Simran, I have two more points for the admin UI. Uh, we should just uh, uh, add two things out there. Uh, if the user has not been uh, not able to register or verify, there should be an option. Uh, no, we are having the option to verify it from the back end, but uh, we do not have an option to uh, resend the OTP from the admin UI. I think that. Oh yes, yes. That That's should right. also be there. Resend OTP. So do you, that. That is uh, just one more thing that needs to be there in the admin UI. Cool. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, yes. Well, now. if you're doing resend uh, admin. Uh, uh, Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. I got it. Because yeah. uh, it, it, there's no need to resend the verification, verification. because you're you're going to yeah. verify it automatically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Simran. Go ahead with the uh, with the next thing, please. Yeah. So uh, yesterday I had shown you the uh, updated wireframe for a live stream. So I basically mm -hmm. did the same thing for an event. And uh, current, I just made one small change. It's the exact same thing as the live. But over here, uh, I have given the user an option. First of all, that if it if it is a live event, like a session inside a live event, then I have given the user an option to provide that as a live stream. Like, do you want to live stream this course as well? So I guess that is what we are uh, providing via Nobi, right? Yes. So yeah, okay. So here he enters his live stream course. 
uh, price of the course uh, by default will be the same as the price of the session which he had entered yes. and if he decides to live stream this course then we will be basically making this live stream uh, we'll also give him an option to make this live stream available as an on demand course after the event yes so, yeah uh yeah so he'll just put the on demand price by default it'll be the same as the price which is which he has entered for this sessions and again the same question would be asked to him that how many professional so uh, uh the on demand hello you there yeah yeah yeah, okay. yeah. um the on demand course um how many times uh, it's because on demand uh the way we are doing the business agreement with these content providers um the on demand is uh required to be there um for a minimum of 1 year before they can either continue leaving it on nobi or they can take the content off if if the they don't renew their relationship with nobi so i don't think an on demand a uh, course should really have uh, any limitation in the number of views because every time they view it uh they are going to pay for it yes so every time they view it they're going to pay for it so the they they only get one view per uh purchase uh uh but in or life is, is it or are you saying that uh oh okay all right so this could be a scenario where um uh, there's a policy from the content provider that for $99 you can view my content uh, you're purchasing it for one view but you get one additional view just in case you want to refresh yourself uh so you essentially giving the content provider the option to to allow uh two views or three views is is that the purpose of this i think no actually uh, if somebody like if i have registered for this live event and this particular so if i have already registered for the live event uh, i as a registered professional after the live event happens how many times am i allowed to see the recording in that live event price so that is basically the oh so uh, this I is just uh, uh, okay so here here okay so there are two scenarios one scenario is i am an instructor i am doing a live stream uh i also want my live stream to then permanently become or at least on an annual basis uh, uh, become an on demand course so yeah. whoever didn't watch it live they can purchase it later to yeah. to uh, to watch it on demand yeah then the other scenario is what you're saying here is that it's a live stream they missed it they purchased it but for some reason they got sick they were late whatever the case is yeah. they missed it and they they still get one free view Yeah. of the on demand is the, so this is what you're addressing yes. here yes yeah yeah okay that's fine so here let's leave that box um so if the live stream becomes a permanent on demand that's a whole different situation yeah uh we we have to think about this now let's take our time uh because remember uh just, let's use the nmdc as an example so all of those uh um course uh, the the nmdc the uh, first day and the second day uh will be uh, was separately recorded by the video people there so what they're doing now is they're producing those uh, courses uh so day 1 will be one complete on demand course day 2 will be one complete on demand course and they will be loading that onto nobi later on maybe next week okay um so now someone who did not attend the live stream uh will be able to purchase day 1 or purchase day 2 okay <clears throat> for one uh, uh on demand purchase now uh, we also <clears throat> 
uh, sorry about that. Uh, we also talked about um, the situation where uh, this is being uh, produced as an on-demand, a live stream, the NMDC live stream is being produced as an on-demand by a third-party video company, and they're putting it up as a different course, as an on-demand uh, uh, course, day one and day two, which is fine. They have the right to do that, and OB has the ability for the, anybody to up, create a new course and upload it as an on-demand. That's okay. The logic is fine there. Um, what uh, I'm trying to clarify here uh, uh, with this wireframe is that when it, when you have a situation where, let's say I'm an instructor and I want to put uh, um, uh, have an event like NMDC and uh, uh, the uh, uh, live streams uh, that are happening, the sessions that are happening, uh, all of them are going to be recorded and automatically yeah. uh, created as on-demand yes. courses. Yes, yes. Correct? that's what is being covered, yes. I'm sorry? Yeah, that is what is being covered in this case. Yes, so that's that's what I'm, I'm just trying to get my understanding clear. So that's what you're doing here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So every session, uh, or or I, I believe you use the term slot, right? Yeah. So every slot that is marked uh, this way, that do you want to live stream this course? Obviously, yes. And this is the price. Uh, uh, do you want to make this live stream available as on demand? Yes. And this is the price. Um, yeah. Uh, so then this way, if I do this for one or more slots, those slots are going to be uh, converted into on-demand course with the designated price here, and yes. that will automatically be available as on-demand, correct? Right. Yeah. Okay, I got it. I got it. Um, now, uh, okay, so this is clear and this is fine. So I have confirmed this, okay? Yeah. Now I have a question. Um, so... In this scenario, uh, you, when um, the uh, these uh, let, let me think one second here. So these courses are going to be okay. So uh, we have remember when we were talking about the uh, channel concept, okay? So yeah, going yeah. Uh, back to thinking about how uh, content is classified in the channel, um, what if this instructor had a branded channel and they wanted uh, the uh, on-demand uh, uh, or even the live stream uh, to only be available in their channel? Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah that anyone who has subscribed to their channel will see it. They, were, they are not making this publicly available to all of the Nobi users. So there should be a flag that mm -hmm. whenever anybody is creating a, a piece of content like this or a live stream in the on-demand content or a live stream turning into an on-demand piece of content, any of uh, those two scenarios uh, you should give the uh, slot uh, admin or the creator yeah. or the whoever the option to say this is available uh, available for everyone or yeah. uh, available for channel subscribers only. You know, yeah. and cool. if that instructor has one or more channels associated with their account, mm -hmm. they should have the if they say. Uh, this should only be in the channel. If they say it's uh, on Nobi, then, w uh, you know, we can put it anywhere we want. You know, it's publicly searchable, available, etc. cetera, right? Um, even if it's in a private channel, it should be searchable. But if somebody finds it and they want to click on it, then there should be a message that please subscribe to get gain access, yeah. right? You know, right. so we have to build that into this. Uh, to support the whole channel concept, because the channel concept, even in my meeting today, is becoming a very solid uh, uh, idea commercially. Because this this person I talked to, she said, you know, she wants to create a, her own branded channel. She will give some content to Nobi to have on the default public, uh, you know, uh, side of Nobi and the Nobi channel. But she will give more premium and advanced topics and contents to her own channel, okay? Mm -hmm. 
Right. right. So we, we have to accommodate that process here. Got it. Yeah, yeah. that's simple. I'll get that done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> okay. Anything else about this? Uh, no, that is it from my end. Okay. So, uh, if you have a minute, I, 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 before we talk about other things, I want to ask about, uh, um, uh, uh, I want to confirm a few points uh, about channels and then ask about, uh, you know, what your thoughts on uh, are on how to implement that. Now, um, yeah. Go ahead, Vatsal. Yeah, you can go ahead. Uh, yeah. no so, um, you know, I've been looking at... Uh, uh, the Netflix UI and, and YouTube and uh, I think that the, uh, YouTube uh, the UI for subscriptions is very simple you know uh, yeah. I have my subscriptions those are my preferred content providers I like watching their videos and I like their content so nobody in one day in the future will have lots of content right hopefully so yeah. in that scenario there'll be lots of providers uh, me as a subscriber I'm not interested in seeing everything all the time you know uh, so in the general search in the general dashboard yes everything will be available there no doubt uh, but uh, on the left pane I should have a choice of uh, uh, you know uh, my channels or something like that right yeah. or my subscriptions yeah. or something I may, maybe we just call it instead of subscription we call it my channels and the idea of the subscription is just the commercial purchase of that subscription so we just call it a, my channels and under my channels, I should have the ones that I purchased, right? So if I click on uh, my the, whichever one that I've subscribed to, then on the right side, I should have um, uh, tabs that uh, classify things in my channel. And I'm, let me explain what classification in the channel means. That means that, uh, you know, similar to this lady I spoke to today, uh, who says that in my channel, I want to have the ability to just just to my uh, 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 subscribers uh, provide uh, free content, you know, um, uh, provide uh, so there should be a tab for free. Uh, the, uh, I explained to her that maybe we could put like flags on the cards to show free or premium. She said, yeah, I, that, that's fine. But then again, you're in, into that scenario where everything's mixed together and the user has uh, confusion about which one, you know, if, if there's a free tab, it's very blatantly clear that all of this stuff is free. You know, they don't have to think about it. You know, so she wants to give like 10 minute, 15 minute videos for free. And those videos are essentially introductory stuff to the paid uh, content, okay? The more premium content, right? So, uh, uh, so uh, I lost my throat. Okay, so uh, uh, they have a, a tab that says uh, 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 free, uh, a tab that says um, uh, uh, pay-per-view, okay? Yeah. Um, and a tab that says uh, um, uh, something that... Uh, uh, Subscription. Yeah, it should be subscription. Um, you know what? You know, when she described it, it sounded like a great idea. But then I just realized that if somebody's subscribing to her channel, they're paying already. So using a tab that says free, that is, sounds stupid, you know? Yeah. Uh, okay, so conceptually what she's trying to do. Okay, so... Uh, okay, maybe we have two. Okay, here's the solution. We have two tabs. One that uh, says included. Yeah, and one, and says, one that says pay-per-view. Right, we already actually had that initially. Oh, okay, okay, all right. I didn't see the UI design for, for that, but that, okay. that came out of the conversation today that it's great that we're going to sar uh, charge a subscription to my channel, but what if I want to sell you know, more premium content uh, and uh, just want to charge, you know, $50 for it and not par be part of the $10 a month subscription, you know? So uh, I think if we have two tabs like that, that'll show that this is included in, in the subscription and all of this content is separate. Right. And there should be a search uh, in there also. Yeah. 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 Got it. 
All right. Yeah. And we are we are confirmed that our model uh, uh, for Nobi in general will be uh, as described in that spreadsheet. We are going to do the subscriptions and um, and things like that. Uh, uh, you know, in the tiers that we described. Just the numbers aren't final, so we don't know whether it's going to be five dollars or eight dollars or whatever the number is. That'll change, but uh, or may not change. But uh, uh, the that structure has been verified. I've discussed it with many people, and it's all fine. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, that's it from my side right now. Uh, do you have any other? Uh Akram, I have one question just for my clarity sake. Uh, the content that will be uh, include, which will be included in the channel, say, which will be the free content probably, right? So when I as a C professional, I'm viewing that content, uh, should that be counted in the number of free hours uh, uh, of the subscription that I've uh, bought? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, no, so... Uh, that's a great question. So the, uh, remember the Nobi. Okay, so the spreadsheet I sent you, that's the base Nobi subscription, right? So, and that we are metering uh, by hour. Okay? Yeah. Now, in addition to the base Nobi subscription, so if I pay the uh, entry level subscription or the middle tier or the unlimited, right? Those are the three levels of Novi subscription, right? Beyond that, if I want to subscribe to another instructor who has a branded channel, right? I will have to pay more for that channel, okay? That'll be an additional monthly fee, okay? Now, that uh, channel will also follow the, the hourly metering structure yes. so the so it the same structure applies so the nobi channel is the basic subscription uh and in that basic subscription uh, you you have those uh, uh um, tiers and each tier will have a limit uh on how many hours they get for that tier um and the same concept applies to the premium subscriptions Right. Yeah. So if this lady sells her subscription, I can't tell her what to sell it for. If she sells it for $50 a month, it's not my problem. It's her problem. Uh, so uh, if she says, okay, it's $50 a month, they get uh, uh, five hours. And uh, I will have another subscription that's $70 a month uh, and they get 10 hours. You know, yeah, so the per hour cost is less on that one. That's her business. She decides to do that. Right. So the concept of uh, a monthly fee X for number of hours Y applies to all subscriptions. Right. No B yes. or otherwise. Yes. And uh, only Nobi, I don't think it's unlikely, very unlikely that any of these branded subscription people are going to have an unlimited uh, uh, level. Very unlikely. I spoke to many of them and they just don't like giving their stuff away on an unlimited basis. I don't know why the psychology is that way, because no one is going to sit there for 50 hours a week watching your stuff. They have a life. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I just don't understand their mentality on that. Uh, but uh, Nobi will have an unlimited option because, it, like I said, it's unlikely any of these licensed professionals are going to sit there and watch that much. Uh, but from a commercial standpoint, it's always good to have the unlimited. Uh, yeah. it, it's yeah. a way to uh, uh, upsell them on, on spending a little bit more. And it actually increases the profit margins of the business. You know. Right. But uh, it, it, I've had uh, you. Can, I can't even express to you how much of a challenge it was trying to convince some of these people of that. But that being said, technically, when we're building this out, we should obviously have that option if they want to do it that way. But yeah. uh, so I'm just yeah. letting you know that most of them won't do it. But we should have the the technical on the yeah. back end built out 
uh, just like the Nobi channel, that all of these premium yeah. channels can have tiers and they, they uh, w can also have an unlimited tier. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, anything else before we go on to the e-com stuff? No, nothing. Okay. Yeah, we can go on to e-com stuff. So okay. then you can just... Uh, uh, yeah, continue. I'll drop. Yeah. Okay, I'll thank you, so much. Bye. Okay, bye. Yeah. So, Vatsal, the... the, the, the uh, when you were showing me the, the UI yesterday and then we had our discussion, um, while you were showing me, when you scrolled up one time, um, uh, you know, I saw the three packages, then, then below uh, there were some other items that I saw. And yeah. that reminded me of something, that uh, the whole concept of the three packages is to, is to get uh, 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 the, uh, the client to purchase, um, to make the purchase, because at the end of the appointment, it's most likely that they have the, the, a positive view of the experience and the and they have a relationship with the service provider and, and you know the psychology of selling is a good situation there right um, so uh, based on that I just realized that the uh, selling these packages on a subscription mean means that this will be uh, obviously a recurring uh, delivery however yep. there are many scenarios where clients um, uh, uh, will need the, uh, that subscription but uh, based on their condition and what they need to be treated, there might be one item or two items that they need to purchase that day so, to receive as part of maybe yeah. the first shipment, you know, and they'll yeah. only use that one time. It's not a recurring uh, refill. You see what I'm right. saying? Right. So uh, in the store, so the idea here is uh, let, let's still keep this whole concept of presenting a simplified uh, purchasing uh, UI to the the client. So uh, the idea is still the same that the the, the user, um, uh, I'm sorry, the the, the uh, service provider logs in with their ID. Okay, so they go to the page. They they log in with their ID, uh, and and then below the area that uh, you display the three packages. Uh, display the other items as single choices in the uh, uh, below that, right? So, uh, so this way now, <clears throat> if I'm the service provider, I log in with my ID um, and I say, okay, uh, in addition to these uh, 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 packages that uh, I have selected for you, um, uh, I've uh, also included uh, the two other items we talked about today that you will need for your home care. Okay, okay. so the the individual should uh, the meaning the the uh, cl uh, the service provider should just put the checks in the checkbox for those. So now all the the patient is seeing is the 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 three options. Uh, and uh, what was selected in addition to those three options to be delivered on the first shipment, okay? Uh, okay. And then they should have a button that says purchase or buy now or something like that below that, right? So this way the, the patient reviews that, okay, these are the three, I have to select one of these packages, uh, and then uh, these are the other ones that... Uh, uh, my service provider talked to me about and uh, recommends that I have. And then they have the choice of unselecting it if they don't want to take it, right? Right. Uh... So the end goal is to hand over the UI perfectly configured for the patient to click buy now. Yeah. However, before they click buy now, they obviously can make changes, right? Yeah. Okay. So now here's the last thought on that. The last yeah. thought on that is of the three packages, you know, if you go to some of these e-commerce sites or any of these SaaS uh, products before you sign up, you get three choices and 
Uh, and, you know, one of them is the bare minimum. One of them is the most expensive. And then they have one in the middle that says recommended. It's in a special frame and it says best value or recommended or something like that. Right. Uh, I think yeah, best yeah. value uh, sounds good. So uh, can we do that? Can, you know, so of the three packages, the three packages appear. But the middle one, middle price one, you know, again, psychology of sales the middle price one should have best value or something like that, right? Or even even the third one. Maybe maybe the one with the most items is the lowest price per item. You know, so give the give the 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 subscriber to the the ecom platform the option of identifying which one is the best value, right? Yeah. And a frame shows around it or some sort of label or some something that shows visually that looks nice that shows this is the best value right right uh let me sit on this and think about it how do i go about it because okay. right now i i have uh, i don't know I'm, I'm lacking some clarity on how will this be built up and uh, how how will this uh, user journey act as what will the basically the user flow will be so let me just sit down and uh, uh, I'll, I'll hear this conversation again and uh, maybe then i'll come back to you with uh, uh, if any queries or i'll be i'll come back uh, to you with the ux via friend. sure sure no problem so uh, the way i'm envisioning this if i am a service provider right yeah and my boss uh, has subscribed to this, uh, you know, basis care uh, e-commerce uh, platform that will be embedded in their website, right? That's yeah. the whole concept from the right. beginning, right? From the right. very high level, that's the purpose of yes. this, right? To give yeah. any uh, doctor, a physical therapist, whoever, anybody, the ability to take the basic care, uh, basis care uh uh, e-commerce uh, platform and embed it into their domain, right? Yeah. Or link it to their domain, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, with that concept, there should be somewhere on the page that once they uh, do that embed, that any of their staff members, anybody there that is part of this uh, business that is on basis care, um, they will go there and uh, uh, they'll have, uh, uh, there should be some sort of admin, uh, page that allows, uh, uh, team members to be added, right? I think we discussed yeah. that in the last call. So this yeah. way, when you add a team member, they get a four digit code, just sim uh, similar to the, the whole connect, uh, site app, uh, uh flow. Uh, mm -hmm. and this way it's a, a easy to remember code that they can use. So, now, if they have a code, then on this basiscare.com uh, slash Tuscan Smiles or whatever, or dot Tuscan Smiles.com, whatever the, uh, the structure is, yeah. they go to that page um, and uh, uh, there could be uh, 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 a method for the, uh, um, uh, there could be a link uh, for, um, uh, what what should we call this? Uh, I, I can't come up with a nice name for it right now. But uh, the, yeah. the, this pa this patient UI, there should be some sort of link for that, yeah. right? So uh, uh, whatever we brand it or call it later, we'll come up with a name. So on yeah. that main page, there should be a link for that. The, so the staff will be trained that they click that, then they'll have to enter their four digit ID, and then this UI that we're discussing comes up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then in that UI, they they will select any. Uh, the they don't have to select the plans because the three the three packages are already going to be there, right? And one of them will be featured from the admin configuration that will be featured as the uh, the uh, um, you know best value uh, plan. Uh, yeah. But then they can easily so they put their four digit codes in. They see the page on the, uh, you know, they're looking at it in a responsive design on their device, whatever device they're using. The, the, then they uh, scroll up and uh, uh, they look, I'm, I'm sorry, scroll down and they look at yeah. uh, the additional items in the store for that particular business. And they say, 
uh, these are the two or three other items that uh, I have discussed with this. In their mind, they're thinking this, and they're going to uh, re that they've recommended. So they already want to pre-select that, and pre then they present this to the patient for yeah. checkout. Yeah, that's yeah. how I see this happening. Okay, right. So from a link on the main page, whatever we decide to call that link, the staff members are going to be trained that you click on that link. The next thing you'll do, you will uh, enter your four-digit code and then uh, uh, select the additional items and present the device to the patient. Yeah. It has to be that simple. Four-digit code, yeah. select additional items, present to the patient. That's that's the training. That's it. There's no other training. Right, right. All right, so think about that because I look at that as a separate page. So you're not really dropping them into the whole, uh, uh, you know, uh, the store and the, then the shopping cart experience because we want the patient to be uh, to 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 have the the uh, scenario that everything the whole shopping cart experience has been decided for them, they have to yeah. choose if they want to check out now. Yeah. Now, uh, for people at home who are patients uh, uh, of this clinic, they can obviously go to the main uh, you know store and and shop and you know go through the shopping cart process. This is I envision this as a totally separate you know, flow, totally separate page design that is not really the general shopping cart functionality. It's just the, the you've advanced the, 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 the patient to the point where they're ready to check out. Yeah. Okay. I get the idea. Okay. Yeah. So that's the, 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 what I wanted to discuss yesterday is that when I really thought about, uh, you know, I envisioned the people walking around and dealing with their patient, finishing the treatment and then talking to them and then get, you know, usually what they do is the, the, the service provider talks to them and says, yeah, based on all of the diagnostics we did today and the treatment we delivered, we think that you should subscribe to one of these uh, ongoing uh, home care uh, packages. But in addition, you have some of these other conditions. You need to buy this, this, and this. And, and yeah. then they present everything to them and say, okay, here it is. And the patient sees, yeah, this is what the, my service provider told me I need. Um, however, this might be too expensive for me right now, but let's remove one or two of these items, and then I'll buy the rest of it. You sure. see what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. when they remove any of the items, the price the, the, the should change also, right? So in that UI... You have to let them know, the patient, what they're paying for, right? Yeah. So the only thing that remains as a decision is, do I take everything that was recommended or do I remove some items and then click buy now? Right. Sure. Right, I get the idea. Okay. And, and then the subscription amount has to be identified clearly that this is... Uh, uh, um, uh, you know, forty dollars per month. You know, the per month has to be shown, and then uh, 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 the other two items, uh, soothing gel or whatever, is ten dollars one time. Okay. And then right. uh, uh, you know, total for today is whatever, right? Right. Yeah. 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 So this way, there's no confusion, no questions, no communication necessary. Everything is laid out. All they have to do is read it and click buy now. Agreed. <clears throat> yes. You can tell I want to sell a lot of stuff and I want to sell it fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. So that's all I had to talk about with this. I think that completes it. I don't think we need to do anything else here. So the whole basis care concept is give them a store, give them the ability to attach a store to their uh, website, their domain, uh, give them the ability to select which items they want to appear in the store. This is all from the admin config. Um, yeah. 
give them the ability to set up the the uh, you know best value package you know um, then uh, uh, um, uh, and that's it pretty much you know there, there's really yeah. nothing much uh, to do there other than that now one thing we have to talk about this has already been done for other projects that we're doing with Alex but uh, I want to pre-populate the the store uh, customer list um, using Alex's utility to pull from the practice management software and uh, put uh, uh, the data into the store. Okay. Uh... We didn't discuss this before, but I think this is a, a very important step that we take the utility and we, we write something for the WordPress back or WooCommerce backend or whatever, you know, that automatically takes that and and creates the customer list in WooCommerce. Yeah. <coughs> uh, because we know well, uh, he's already developed the, the integration with the practice management software and we've used it in in Connect and, and so forth. So and yeah. Easyfy. So we might as well utilize that and pre-populate the, the, the data. So it's easy to send promotional things and, and all of that to the customer list. Yes, we can do that. Uh, I'll have a, uh, so we can uh, probably, uh, once we are done with this uh, uh, patient UI, we, I can have a call with uh, Alex and then uh, maybe we, we can discuss how, how we do we want to go about it. Yes, yes, yes. This patient UI thing is extremely important. I have to, these people are calling me, the investors that want to invest in this project, to go tomorrow to New York to meet with them. You know, but I, I keep telling them I, I, I have scheduling issues. I'm coming, I'm coming. So yeah. uh, the faster you can do this, just the patient UI. I don't obviously need the back end Alex thing until later, but uh, yeah. Uh, if you can finish this patient UI journey as quickly as possible so I can demonstrate it with the sample items that we have right now uh, yeah. on Tuscan Smiles, you know, uh, then uh, uh, I, I need that as soon as you can give it to me. Sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> sure. So let me just first uh, uh, work out uh, the condition that we had today uh, and uh, maybe then uh, have a, another call on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, if, if I have some queries, uh, and uh, then I'll first of all take uh, design a prototype, and then uh, I can take up it for the development. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. Right. All right. Thank you, my all friend. Right. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Bye. Yeah.